So today we're going to be talking about fascia and how it remodels based on mechanical load. I'm going to show you a visual concrete example of this in nature. And then we're going to briefly talk about how, you know, what to do about this and what not to do about this. Sometimes knowing what not to do is even more important than knowing what to do. So let's take a look at that visual demonstration in nature. So the bison, we're gonna talk about the bison and the bison hump. Fascia is piezoelectric, which is a fancy term for it remodels based on load, on mechanical pulling loading. So the bison hump is actually a giant sheath of fascia, giant sling of fascia. So let's look on at the picture here on the left of a young bison. And if you can see, he barely has any bison hump at all, right? And if you go to the picture on the right, you can actually see, right, that the bigger the animal, the more mature the animal, the bigger the bison hump is. So what is that about? So a bison spends the majority of its life doing what? forward head grazing to eat. It's got a gigantic skull. No muscle is capable of holding that gig gigantic skull in that position without eventually sustaining damage or tears. So what the body does is it lays down, in this case, superficial fascia, like a sling, slowly building more and more and more, right? The more time the bison spends grazing, over a lifetime, the bigger the bison hump. You can even literally in a field of bison, you can tell which bison is older based on the size of the bison hump, okay? A very visual concrete demonstration of fascia in action in nature. Now, let's take this to the human experience and human anatomy. Enter the human bison hump, which is the lovely term for this. So. Here are three examples, the pictures of that bison hump is what they call it, right? There's an extreme example on the right here. And it's very tempting when you just look at that, very tempting to imagine that that is a bony formation, a kyphosis, a forward bend of the spine that's causing that protrusion. So I love this picture in the middle that I found, which shows you the head is indeed in a forward bend position. It is grazing forward like the bison and the entire waking hours of this, this human's life. And therefore, no, that hump on the outside, it is not bone. It is superficial fascia being laid down layer under layer on top of layer on top of layer. And of course, the more the person continues to have their head forward, the more of that tissue is going to be built up to sustain that load. Now, at Sterling Structural Therapy, I have seen this in action. I have seen this remodel over time, about two to three years span. Clients have adapted and changed their daily habits and postures, and these issues have improved greatly or resolved. Where we have seen it is I have seen people have the bison hump, right, like this, get reduced and reduced as we enabled their whole spine and body to be more stacked in gravity and not forward leaning. I've also seen in very interesting examples of scoliosis where a person is so far bent to one side that their body will build up connective tissue on the other side and as they realign, both sides start to match up and that goes away. I have seen um, these lumps, visible, big, knotted lumps on people's calves, on people's hips, um, simply go away over time without us ever touching it. All we do is balance out the connective tissue and those lumps literally start, those big giant knots start to disappear and go away. So let's discuss that a little bit more, right? The what to do. What to do is 
change your habit because this buildup of connective tissue, it's over time. So you need not just to go in and get some fascial work done or, you know, take just one yoga class, but the rest of the day, we're going to be walking around with our head hanging in front of us and on our phones and on our laptops and then sitting there and watching some Netflix all rounded up. So truly need to change, overhaul your habits. This is doable. We do this with our clients all the time. This is a big foundation of Sterling structural therapy. Now, as you change over time, your body literally stops laying those fascial, right? The, the, the fascial cells stop to build in those spots and they actually do start to break down because that's how it happens in your body. If you've ever heard of osteoporosis, it's a great example of your body building and remodeling. So there are osteoblasts that produce more bone. There are osteoclasts that eat old bone. And osteoporosis is the imbalance between the two where the uh, building cells stop working and the eating away cells continue to work. But here's an example, you can leverage this to your advantage. You change the way, right? Form follows function. Change the way your function. Your form will literally change, okay? Within reason, yes? Um, what not to do. This is so important. One must not try to just, oh, I've got this big protrusion over here or on my calf or on my hip or over here. I'm just going to randomly fascia blast it and, and, and you know, uh, release it and go at it and pressure point and lean into a lacrosse ball and all of those kind of things. Why? So let's ask a question about the bison. What would happen if you took a mature bison and you were like, oh my God, we're just gonna remove that entire bison hunt. Well, the truth is you would compromise the bison's uh, function and ability to eat, to graze. And most probably the bison would now injure itself as a result of you just going at the bison hunt because, well, what's gonna hold its head? So this is actually, we see this all the time that people end up seeing us after years of chronic pain and they've tried and everyone, they've gone to many people to dig on all sorts of parts and areas and they actually either don't get better or get worse because what we call this is don't open Pandora's knot. Just because you've got this buildup or a bunch of trigger points and knots even palpable, please don't just randomly go at that and assume you should open those up. You should ask yourself, huh, why are those there? Step back, look at the big picture. So our conclusion, and disclaimer, we're slightly biased at this, yes, is that please, we highly recommend that you get properly assessed. What is the pattern of your myofascia, right? So we can tr truly start to look at your system and evaluate what needs to get down. So what we recommend is please go get assessed, properly assessed if you really do have an issue, right? We deal with chronic pain population, that's an issue. So get properly assessed so that you know if that extra knot, is it something that we need to balance out down below and will go away? Or is it something that you need to stretch and open up so that you get more function, more ability, more of what you want, and not just randomly, you know, release the fascia wherever you think something is, or you see, or you feel it. And that's our two cents.